we're going to look at a practice problem. So we have this system, and we can go through and show this, and this is a stable plant. We can show that it has infinity norm greater than or equal to 1. It's just barely greater than or equal to 1. You can zoom in and find it's like 1.0 something. So we have this system. So we now consider this uncertainty. Okay, This uncertainty has magnitude equal to 1 for all frequency. This is an, what's called an all-pass function. And so it's very common to use all-pass functions for these types of things because this is a transfer function, and yet it's, it's not a constant transfer function, and yet it, uh, it has uh, magnitude that is known. And so by adjusting the f this quantity, so notice it's the same value, by adjusting this value, I can adjust the phase. Okay. So we choose this for the phase so that the phase of this matches up with the phase of the transfer function at this point. Okay. And um, so the significant thing is the infinity norm of this is equal to 1 for all, um, for all frequencies. So this is a specific uncertainty. So we have a specific plant. We have a specific uncertainty. Now this certainty is not a random uncertainty. We chose it carefully. When you actually close the loop with those two, so we have p over 1 minus p delta, this is what we get. And we see because of this minus sign, our system is indeed unstable. Okay. Now notice that this is really small, which means we're really close to the imaginary axis, but yet it's still unstable. Okay. So we started off with something um, with something in the that, that uh, the plant was stable. And we chose, an, we found an uncertainty to make the closed loop system unstable. Okay, so this is this is what's happening. Now, so the question is, we have this function here. How did how do we get this? How do you get a function like that? How would you how would you find that function? Well, one way again is using the Nyquist uh, the Nyquist criteria. In this case, our plant we we can so notice I'm looking at this quantity here. Um, 1 minus p delta, not p w delta. So the w here is, um, is there's really not a w there. So, um, so we can think of the w then as having magnitude 1, okay? As in fact being just the value 1. And so that's the magnitude of w being 1 um, gives us that information. So if I take my um, plant and the uncertainty of, the, of this form for some value of a, and so what I've gone through here is I've gone through and shown the Nyquist plot of all of this, so which includes the uncertainty, for various values of a. Okay, so for when a is equal to zero, so remember our, our original plant was stable. So when a is equal to zero, notice the minus one point over here is definitely not affected. When a is one, we get this set of Nyquist plots. And so we can see we're encroaching on the minus one point. When a is equal to three, our Nyquist plot shifts over this way. When a is equal to five, we're like right on top of that. Okay. It, it, it turns out we're, we're, not, we're actually not quite touching it. And so uh, at a is equal to five, we're not quite touching it. But as you can see, when a is equal to 5.18, we are actually encircling it. Okay, so we actually have that. And so the Nyquist plot can show us that as, as we vary with this um, all pass function. As we vary that all pass function, we can see how we encroach upon that uh, minus one point. So again, for the Nyquist criterion, the closed loop system is stable if there are no encirclements of the minus one point. And so we have that situation. So we, we can zoom in on the minus, minus one point and find in, indeed that, uh, that we can find a value of A for which we, have, we get an encirclement. So this is an example that kind of illustrates what's going on. Hopefully it's helpful to you.